Welcome back to the final episode of Chemical TV at Chemical New America's 2023. With today, an interview on product risk assessment and liability, a statement on global HESCOM, and we will say farewell to our local reporter Pierre. But first, some sound bites from our session on the Asia Pacific with Sue Mateo. So we've, uh, in the past couple of days, we've looked at um, American regulations, North America, South American regulations. We've also looked at European REACH regulations, the CLP quite extensively. Today, we pivoted away um, and looked at other REACH-like regulations and starting with the UK and then with Turkey REACH, um, as well as the Indian upcoming regulation, uh, which is looking like REACH-like uh, regulation. Um, subsequently, went on to uh, further east to the Asian regulations. A lot of attention on Korean uh, REACH, um, especially since their deadline had just, uh, their first registration deadline had just passed last year. A lot of uh, interest in the lessons learned there. I think uh, what was apparent was that uh, there are uh, a lot of variations to what REACH will look like in other countries and that will be a cause of concern um, for the industry. Uh, it brings along a, a level of complexity, um, especially with data sharing and I think the key messages from the um, discussions and the, the, the presentations today were really around complexity of data sharing, how you would acquire data and share data um, across different regions. Um, and that communication uh, that needs to go um, with sharing that data between consortiums in different countries, um, purchasing data, that is also very, very complex. And so a lot of attention needs to be put onto data sharing and communication um, going forward. It was a great session and a lot of learnings uh, for the industry. After all these developments in the Asia Pacific, time to see what Pierre has in store for us today. Today, I wanted to introduce you to these seven ladies, the painted ladies of San Francisco. These Victorian houses, standing proud and tall in their vibrant hues, are a testament to the city's rich architectural heritage. In my perspective, the ladies resemble a butterfly because of their colorful and vibrant exteriors, which are unique, eye-catching, and intricate, just like the wings of a butterfly. Probably no coincidence, since the painted lady is the name of a common butterfly here in San Francisco. Here is that other painted lady. Nice how you transform the story from a building into a butterfly, like a caterpillar into a butterfly. Can you tell us more about San Francisco's wildlife? Absolutely. Let me take you on a magical ChemCon TV journey showcasing the amazing wildlife in San Francisco. We will start at... At Pier 39. Once upon a time, the docks at Pier 39 were abandoned and completely devoid of life until a group of sea lions, curious and adventurous, decided to make the derelict piers their home, transforming the area into a bustling and vibrant sea lion sanctuary. These days, as spring drags on, the sea lions tend to migrate southwards, but nonetheless, on days like this, it attracts visitors, humans and pelicans alike to witness these playful and magnificent creatures in their natural habitat. A man-made habitat, but absolutely stunning, is the Golden Gate Park, a magnificent urban park covering over 1,000 acres of land, including lakes, gardens, trails, and attractions, such as the California Academy of Sciences, the San Francisco Botanical Garden, and the Japanese Tea Garden. Now, when the park was first created, the idea was to honor the Wild West, and therefore, one of the wildest treasures in the park are the bison. So, if you're looking to escape the hustle and bustle of the city, come visit the Golden Gate Park. Back to the busy streets of San Francisco, probably the last place you'd expect to find wildlife, but if you pay close attention, you might be able to see some wild parrots. You should also be careful not to bump into any elephants. That's because a city law actually allows you to walk your elephant here on Market Street as long as you're carrying a leash. I love broad-minded San Francisco, much better than narrow-minded Florida, where if I were to tie my elephant to a parking meter, I'd still have to pay, as if it were a vehicle. Thanks for these wild stories. I cannot get enough of them, so let's do two more stories today. Here is your next location. Build bridges, not walls, and you will have a friend. Absolutely, that seems an easy one. Do not forget to return your big friend, and I hope you kept the receipt. From the elephant at Market Street to a mammoth in the background of our cartoon in the interview on product risk assessment and liability. Please watch the highlights of that interview with James Voto and Marianne Heckman. How can companies balance the need for innovation, which there is of course, eh, with the need to minimize product risks? It's so difficult to innovate now, I would say, <laughs> because if you start innovating, then you spend a lot of money on research and development and maybe building new plants, scaling up, 
whatever changing existing processes and once you are there you add hundreds or millions of dollars uh, doing tests for, for compliance and in the worst case you end up with some classification and nobody wants to buy your product in the end. Um, so I think the best way forward is to, to start in steps, start with small volumes, use uh, the possibilities of do small volume exemptions, polymer exemptions in different countries that you can uh, learn step by step about the hazards of the product and um, yeah, only scale up when, when, when the market allows it and when, when you have sales in, in higher volumes. Because in the end, if you do the full reach analysis, you would always find all the hazards and risks your product has right. usually. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, and the cost of doing all that work when you don't have a market yet, yeah. would, it would sort of kill the product before it got, ever got off the ground. So I agree with you completely yeah. that, that I think you need to sort of match your sort of investment in yeah. research looking at safety uh, with sort of the scale of development, and certainly you can l limit, um, you know, practical environmental and you know human health risk if you're just dealing with small quantities as opposed to, yeah. to large ones. Please watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel. Not sure if liability is indeed a great invention, but a bridge definitely is. Pierre, tell us everything about San Francisco's famous bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge was once called the bridge that's c that couldn't be built. That's because of its treacherous currents, powerful winds, and of course, Carl the Fog. And as you can see, that's exactly the case today. The wind and the fog has all but engulfed the bridge, making it barely visible. From our perspective, actually, you can just f barely make out the faint lines of the bridge. Uh, it seems like Carl the Fog has done it again. But of course, this is nothing new. Historically, the area has been subject of powerful weather conditions. And at one point, well, it was deemed impossible. But the bridge's completion in the 1930s during the Great Depression is a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. You might be wondering though, why that color on the bridge? Well, the red-orange color on the bridge was actually chosen to enhance its visibility in harsh weather conditions. All in all, it's one of the most illustrious symbols in San Francisco with stunning views of the city and also of the Pacific Ocean. From suspension to suspense, looking forward to what you would recommend our delegates to do this weekend. Here is your last fortune cookie. Where there is a path, there is a way. Indeed, life is a journey. And if you fall in love with that journey, you'll fall in love with life. Wonderful. Time to go to the statement of the day. Happy to have in our studio today, Bonita Reynolds of 3E. Welcome, Bonita. Thank you. It's great to be here. Bonita, industry is always keen to have an aligned communication strategy in their value chain. Can you tell us more about important aspects to consider in relation to global hazard communication? Three things come to mind. Trust truth and transparency. We need to extend truth uh, so that all information necessary for disseminating safety information and safety data sheets and labels comes true in its entirety and in its accuracy. And then we extend that through transparency, through sharing information, through tools, etc. And the trust factor comes in because we uh, treat that information, that data with the security it deserves so that folks' IPs will be protected. And your statement is? Good hazard communication uh, entails an unraveling of the DNA of the value chain. Budita, thank you very much. I hope to see you and your colleagues at ChemCon Europe 2023 in October. Time to say farewell to Pierre. Pierre, please disclose some final San Francisco secrets to us. Absolutely. Well, for those of your delegates with any, any energy left, I definitely recommend coming to Mirror Woods. Just a short drive north of San Francisco, deep in the forest, we find ourselves in a truly breathtaking piece of wood with redwood trees that have been around for over a thousand years. Truly an astonishing spectacle. I mean, one can't help but stop, look up, and just stare with a sense of wonder. Don't forget, to visit the hidden gem in Muir Woods, a place where gigantic redwoods form a natural cathedral. Cathedral Grove is a silent preserve and home to the tallest, oldest redwoods. Muir Woods and its cathedral grove with these tall trees that have stood for centuries create a sense of tranquility and wonder that can't be found anywhere else. Or I should say almost nowhere else, since for those that need to re-energize, I would recommend visiting Grace Cathedral to participate in a yoga class. A 
yoga class in this stunning, serene, indoor labyrinth creates a peaceful and meditative atmosphere for spiritual and physical practices, a unique and rejuvenating experience. From San Francisco, this has been Pierre Vo with CCTV. Thank you for your awesome stories this week. Now it's time for the focus of the day. Today we focus on supply chain communication and product stewardship strategies. So we take a closer look on how to organize and handle global regulatory challenges. We look into opportunities of digitalizing compliance communication along the supply chain. And we'll get some tips and tricks on identifying and managing supply chain disruption risks. Furthermore, lessons learned in the fragrance industry on their global code of practice and product stewardship program. And as a grand finale, a deep dive in the EU corporate sustainability reporting. Much more on this at Chemical Europe 2023 in October. Once again, thank you for watching. It was our privilege again sharing all the news with you from Chemical the Americas. And we hope you liked it and we we'll look forward to seeing you at Chemical Europe 2023 in Vienna.